Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now today we are going to investigate a water leak on this 2007 Peugeot 307 1.6 petrol. So stay tuned. Okay, so here we are with the Peugeot 307. This is uh, 1.6. Now the lady that owns this recently took this vehicle in for an MOT and the MOT inspector reckoned that she's got a water leak coming from the top hose. So we're going to have a, a look at that today because it's very very rare to have a water leak from the top hose on one of these. I expect actually it's a thermostat because the, the thermostats are all enclosed in plastic as they are now in all modern cars. So what we shall do, we'll see if we can get a camera down there and have a look at this water leak. Which says we've taken everything to pieces first. And we'll see if we can discover where this water leak's coming from. And then we shall, uh, we shall think about what we're going to do next. Okay, so that's filming now. Let's go down here and have a look. Now by the looks of it, it's been leaking for some time. You can see all the, the brown rusty deposits that's down there. I'm not sure if you can see it on here. Um, so if I squeeze the hose So right, it does look like it's the thermostat. Probably a crack inside it somewhere. Hairline crack perhaps. If the thermostat's not working properly then it may have overheated at some time. Crack the plastic. But I should think that uh, possibly there hasn't been enough uh, antifreeze in with the water. So the water's frozen and then it's possibly expanded as they do and then cracked the, uh, the, the, the plastic housing that the thermostat's in so right we shall try and get uh, all this into pieces then and try and get to this thermostat okay so to start off with to get to that thermostat it's all housed underneath this air box here and to get to that first we've got to remove the resonator that's here then we've got to uh, just undo the two screws there that's holding on the, the brake fluid reservoir so we'll undo those two and just move that to one side which will give us more access to this so let's start by undoing this first that's quite easy to do it's got a, a ridged pipe on here if we turn that clockwise and that will come off there now there is a clip down the side here which should hold this on but unfortunately it doesn't it looks like it's a uh, it's been broken off now that should if I pull that that should come off that's brilliant so that's the resonator box so now we're going to uh, find uh, a T a T screw driver bit to go in there. It looks to me like a T21 or something. I'm just going to find one of those. Now I do. Uh, sorry about the sunlight. so I don't lose them. Thank you. 
Okay, so we should carefully just unclip that from here, just so it moves out the way, just so we can get to uh, to all this. So the next thing that we're going to do is there's a little yellow thing there. I don't know if you can see that or not. We've got to push that down so this will come out, and then we need to get in there to undo that screw at the back there to make this loose and then if you come down here there is what looks like a, I think it's a 10 millimeter screw there that wants to come undone I shall check that in a minute if it's 10, 10 millimeters or not if not I shall let you know so let's see if I push that down will this come out so yeah, that's off there. And now I should get a screwdriver, see if I can get at the back there. Of course, we have to have a, a small screwdriver, which I bet I haven't got. Okay, so now we need to undo this. I'll see if we've got, uh, I think it's a 10 mil. Okay, so this is a 10 mil, I was right. those up there so we know where they are so now it's just a case of wobbling this I might have to just undo this a bit more Okay. It's a bit fiddly to get out. But that's it, that's the air box out. Okay. So, let's have a look. Seems to be a lot of water. So yeah, when you when you start pumping the pipe, you can see that there's water coming out of the top there. Must be a hairline fracture in this thermostat. So the MOT inspector was wrong, he reckoned it was just the top hose was leaking. Okay, so now we've got to remove that, but the first thing we need to do is to get down to where that bottom hose is, undo that, and uh, drain the rest of the water that's uh, in this system so we shall get on with doing that now
Okay, so we put a small bowl underneath so we can catch the water out of the radiator. So now we'll just gently move this off while it flushes the system. Okay, so there we have it. Right, next. So right, we've got a screwdriver. Just put it behind there. Just lever that out gently. We don't break these wires. And then that'll come out of there, that's fine. Now, we're going to have to undo one, two, three, four those four bolts not too sure what size they are at the moment, are they 10 mil as well? yep, they're 10 mil possibly going to have to undo these as well that's on here make it easier for us to get to the bolts Right, we shall do that now. Okay, so we look like we're going to have to get another T20 in there, I think, to undo that if we can. It looks a bit bigger than a T20. I'll have to find something else.
Okay, so we're actually having trouble getting this off because that is round the other way. I can't actually get any pliers around there to take it off here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the top hose off by undoing this. So it's nice and loose. And then we should be able to move that off the radiator. There we are. Which gives us a bit of get more room to play around with this he says it's actually stuck on this bottom hose here and we got the trouble with that is again we can't get to where we want to be let's just move this around a minute and bring that up ah. that is in terrible condition that is can you see that inside there look at the state of it I've got all the pieces here look it's just dropping the pieces in my hands look at the state of that that's all crumbling so it definitely needed a new one so now I'm going to have to get some pliers on there so we can try and get this pipe out of there Okay, that's done that, so let's have a look at this in a bit more detail. So that would have gone on there with a spring on top. So that's absolutely had it, that has. So now I've got to take this this off here. Let's get, to, let's get into the shade a bit and we can have a, another another look at this. Okay, let's have a, a, a proper look. So like I was saying, that should fit into there. That should fit on there. And of course you have the gasket that goes round. You can see this gasket is all, it's all eaten away. The plastic as well. If we take that off, because that's all this plastic is just crumbling. Look at that, it's crumbling in my fingers. So it well and truly had it. It's no wonder it's leaking. <laughs> that is absolute, uh, that's totally finished this one is, totally finished, so I need the pair of pliers now just to get this off because we need this top hose. So again just pliers on there and then just try and manoeuvre it round. because we need this pipe. So let's just pop that there a minute. So here's the new one I've got. Let's compare them, always compare them to make sure that you've got the right part. So look at that should be exactly the same now this where the, the sensor connects that's actually round the wrong way as you can see if you can pull this out you can turn it round so it is in the right uh, right place I don't know if I can do that with the with these. So we just pull that out, and you can gently turn it round to how it was. Is that right? So yeah, that's how it should be. And then we, we put this this clip back in there, which holds it in place. So that's how it is. So right, we shall clean up where it sits and then put the whole thing 
back together again. Not really. So I do apologise about the sunlight, but look at the state of this, it's absolutely had it. There's bits of gasket inside here and all sorts, so, but before we fit the new thermostat, all this wants to be cleaned off. It must be spotless. You don't want any, any grubbiness on there at all, otherwise the new gasket is not going to seal into place. So we're going to have to get something to clean all this up. Because it really is a mess. But you can see, if we bring the camera around here, and you see all the all that down there, it's been leaking for a long, long time. But I know that the lady that owns the car says she's been putting water in this car once a week, so <laughs> that's the reason why. Okay, we shall clean all this up and then fit the new thermostat. Okay, so here we are. As you can see, we've we've cleaned it all up. It's nice and smooth. You can always uh, put some Mr. Gasket round there if you wanted to, if you couldn't get it as smooth as this, if there's any corrosion round there of any sort. So what we shall do now is we shall put the new part back and then put it all back together. And then we shall put the water in and try and drain the system through of air bubbles. So, let's get the new one on. Okay, before we fit it, I just want to show you this, because this is the bleed screw to get rid of the air bubbles. There is two of these on this engine. I shall show you the other one when we get started, but once you put water in, you undo this, and the, the water will start coming out, along with the bubbles, hopefully. I just thought I'd show you that just before we fit it and if you can look through there I don't know if you can see that or not but there is the little hole where the water will if I undo that it might be put some light in it so that's where hopefully the water will come out with the air bubbles for that part right let's fit this then now just tighten up a little bit okay okay so here we have the new part in place now, when you tighten it up, tighten it up in a different inner sequence. Tighten that one, and then that one, and then that one, and then that one. Do a crisscross effect, okay? That way, you'll get the gasket to sit more evenly. And you want to set your torque wrench for about 10 newton meters of torque remember this is plastic so we don't want to tighten it up too much and uh, get it to break that just wouldn't do at all so like I said in sequence whichever but do that one that one that one and that one do a crisscross effect But doesn't that look a lot better than the old one? Right, we shall connect the pipes up now. Okay, so now we're going to undo this bleed valve. We filled the expansion box up, bottle up. So, as soon as this starts to come out, we'll just put this water bottle in, just to catch the water, along with the air bubbles. 
and keep an eye on the uh, expansion tank as well to make sure that you don't run out of water. Okay. Okay, so we've just come into the car because we want to bleed the second bleed nipple. So what you need to do now is to turn the heater on full, which uh, opens up the heater matrix. And now we shall go back outside and then we shall try and uh, drain the next bleed nipple. So there is the, uh, the second bleed nipple. It'll be difficult to hold the camera and uh, do this at the same time, but we shall try. And there's the water coming out. Lots of air came out with it, which is what we wanted. She'll just uh, do that a couple of times. And that just puts the water around the system. Okay. Now we shall uh, tighten everything up and put the other bits and pieces back. Okay, so here we are. You can hear that the engine is now running. We've replaced the hydraulic fluid reservoir and the resonator box and the air box. Everything else is now back into place. Now I haven't shot video doing this because basically replacing everything is exactly the same way as taking it off. I shall just show you the, the water bottle there. I haven't replaced the, t the top yet. I like to uh, leave the top off for a, a little while, a few minutes, just to get the, uh, the water warm. And sometimes you get some of the air bubbles will escape from the water bottle. So yeah, that's it. That's how to replace the, uh, the thermostat on a Peugeot 307. Now let's have a look at the thermostat itself. It really was in a mess, this thermostat. I can't believe that manufacturers now put these plastic cases on the side of engines. As I showed you with this one, it's, it was, it's gone all brittle and it was all dropping to pieces. So anyway, that's it for today's video. I hope this video has helped somebody along the way. If it has, then maybe you'd like to give us those thumbs up and subscribe. So thank you all so very, very much for watching. And I will see you all soon in the next video.